We're back again, back at it, Rob. It's we Brian Sosha. It. Rob's here, too. We are ready to rock and roll, strut and stroll. We're live from Boston, Austin, from Maine to Spain, all points in between. You like that? You like that? Every time, man. I, I, so I slick. I slick. It's I don't think it's, it just flows. Uh, the show's going to flow today, too. A lot of great stuff coming up. We're yeah. excited that you're here yeah. with us. Uh, matter of fact, let's just do the rundown. I mean, look at all the stuff that we have to talk about today. It's always jam-packed. Not, not any different today. We have Marcel yeah. Stamps coming on, who's challenging Mike Richmond coming up at BKFC 16. That's going to be awesome. Looking forward to him because Marcel's got a good story. University of Alabama football player. He was a yep. star there. And we have some questions to ask him. He had a great fight against Joey Beltran when he went up to champion. So we'll get into that with Marcel Stamps later on. Also, we're going to release the BKFC weight classes. Now, these are the official weight classes. Official. Not from what you're us. seeing online. This is official from, from the BKFC rankings. We're going to yeah. get into that. And also, speaking of official, you see a lot of different BKFC rankings. Rankings aside from the weight class. You see the rankings online, too. We appreciate people kind of spitballing and armchair quarterbacking. But BKFC has provided us with a list of official BKFC rankings for 175 pounds. We're going to get into that later, too. I know a lot of fighters are excited to see if they're ranked and where they're ranked. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, also looking to talk to BKFC matchmaker, the great Nate Shook. We're going to hold him accountable for some matches he makes. They're usually good ones, so it's not going to be a bad thing. But we'll ask him all Can't kinds wait. of questions. Can't wait to get him on. And if you have a question for Nate Shook, of course, you can drop that in our comment section. We'll be asking them later as well, or Marcel Stamps. And we were talking about this off the air, the YouTube dislike button. They're talking Ooh, about doing away hot. with it. That is hot. That's the hot thing right now. What do we have, like, you know, crazy amount of uh, responses from that? Yeah, we put a poll up for that. We had like 6 million <laughs> six thousand something like that six and a half thousand but a lot of people into that so we're going to talk about mm -hmm. that but first i want to talk about bkfc 16 the venue mismatch is it 16 18 18 wrong on my format see i'm a diva i need my format yeah we've got a mismatch 18. on our uh, on our typo here <laughs> that's all right we appreciate it. bkfc 18 the mismatch 18. people are talking a lot about bkfc 18 already um as we head into bkfc what's it 16 we're heading into now so they're talking about 18 already. They're talking about how it was going to be in Miami mm -hmm. at the Hard Rock Stadium. Now, from what I can see, that was never confirmed. Um, and I'm understanding it's not going to be at the Hard Rock Stadium. It We're going to have it at the Hard Rock Stadium. At the Hard Rock, the beautiful Hard Rock Casino. I just found this out today. I'm very excited about it. Uh, so I know some rumors were started. Look at that beautiful guitar. Honky Tonk Man would be Hollywood, so happy. Florida. Man, that place is amazing. I've been there about two, two times in the past year alone. So well, it looks beautiful. 10 times. Oh, it's gorgeous, man. It's absolutely gorgeous. That place is amazing. That's going to be a great venue. My buddy Dolph Ziggler lives in Hollywood, Florida, too. So I'm looking forward to seeing him come out. Uh, I know he's from that area. That'll be a good time. So it's once again, it's not going to be at the stadium. And for me, I mean, stadium sounds cool. It really does. But I kind of like the more intimate venues anyway because you get the fans in there, you have a good capacity, and mm -hmm. it just it just feels more intimate to me. I always enjoy that better. It's louder. Uh, the fighters can hear you. The the, the uh, adulation they get from the crowd doesn't dissipate, dissipate, excuse me if I can speak today, into the air. It's in that building, so it's really loud, it's and people come to see a fight. Man. It is. It truly is. And Hard Rock Casino, what a better place to go there, and maybe I'll make some money, too, aside from my my uh, my guarantee that I get yeah, when I go there. Catch me at the tables, man. Yeah, catch me losing I'm, all my money. I know, I know. Don't sit next to this guy. You sit next to Rob at the table, he's going to be hitting you up for money. He's going, <laughs> I'm I'll terrible, pay, man. I gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so we're excited about that. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about matches. Some are not confirmed yet uh, that you may think are confirmed. By the way, I should say, unless you hear it from us on the BKFC show or from one of our socials, anything you read is not confirmed unless you hear it from us. That's fair to say. Absolutely, man. I mean, the rumor mill, I mean, which is a good thing. Everyone has their picks. Everyone has their theories on who's fighting next. Um, and, you know, Let's get it from the horse's mouth. Nate's going to be on. He's the matchmaker. I'm going to ask him the hard questions, man. Is, I want to know about that, too, because we have the 175 pound mm -hmm. tournament we've been talking about. That's coming up. Uh, yep. We'll talk a little more about that and everything else with Nate, too. Uh, again, that'll come up in about, probably about uh, 45 minutes, I'll guess. I'm not good with time. We just kind of hang out here. That's what we do. Uh, the other thing I want to bring up as we continue trending topics in combat sports, McGregor trilogy. It's locked in, man. July uh, 10th. I love how I said McGregor. You know, <laughs> you know, Dustin beat him last time. So I should be saying Dustin's name. You should. But you should. still just say McGregor, right? Dustin's awesome, man. He's, He's incredible. a great guy. I think he came to one of our events, man. He was live. Him, he was he was Tony, at our show? Yeah, a bunch of ex, you know, ex, excuse me, mixed martial arts mar martial artists. I'm stumbling over. My After they come to our names. show, they end up being ex mixed martial artists because they exactly. want to fight for us. I've seen that time and time again. They but really he, do. He's definitely a fan. We're a fan of him. He's a great guy. Great um, guy. This guy leaves to go to the Fight Island or whatever it's called, and mm -hmm. he leaves his family, and he's more concerned with getting home to his family than fighting. He was saying that last fight. So I have a lot of respect for him as a man like that. And heck, he's a great fighter. I mean, you think Connor was a little soft last time, being a little nice? Think he'll be a little more of an edge this time, a little more crazy, Connor? 
It's over. Connor's time's gone. Yeah. That, that's my opinion. I'm going to put it out there. Portier is going to rock him. It's going to be the same thing. He's going to think he's going to come with the leg kicks. I, he's not. Connor's just not hungry anymore, man. Too much money? Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, I understand that you, you get comfortable. You can sleep on your bed of money. You can swim yeah. around it like Scrooge McDuck back in the day. You can dive in and out of your coins. I get I, it. Yeah. I was watching a UFC. I'm not sure exactly which one it was. And he actually mentioned that to his opponent. And this is years ago. It was basically, you know, leading up to one of his bouts that I don't have what my opponent has. And he was speaking towards a wife and a family and saying that his opponent wasn't hungry enough. He has that. He has, I think he has another kid on the way. So he has two, another on the way. He's married. He's got millions in the bank. He just cashed out of his, his whiskey for a oh God knows, you know. So you're a father. I'm a father. If I have mm-hmm. another kid, even if I'm rich, I'm still hungry. I got to make sure they're fed. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, that it's harder sure. to be a, a father, I feel like. And I would imagine be a fighter as well. I have a hard time doing this as a father because you're trying to, you know, take care of your family yep. and you're all mentally spent. Then you come here and you talk about this and you're like, huh. And it's understandable. Listen, yeah. man, I mean, you have a family. It's tough, you know, to, to put in those hours in the gym. Um, it's, it's tough. I just think it's his time has come so, when it comes to. But if he loses, if he he doesn't go away, what's his next step? That's a great question, man. I like. I don't know what the fans think, man. I, I wouldn't even know. Like, if Connor loses, what what is next for him? Is it, is he going to boxing? Is that even going to draw? Uh, who knows? I know that a lot of people they they kind of they some put don't talk UFC, don't care about it. We are BKFC. We're going to talk more about BKFC in a minute. But like you said, it's an ice cream shop. Variety of exactly, different things we talk man. about. This so, is trending yeah. in combat sports. Yeah, I mean, see, we go through our trending in combat sports all the time. So we're going to be talking about UFC. We might talk about wrestling. It's predi- predominantly BKFC. Yeah. Uh, but if you're here just for BKFC. Um, unsubscribe. Just go away. <laughs> don't say <laughs> yeah, that. No, nah, I said it. I don't uh, care. This guy, don't listen to him. Don't unsubscribe. We love you. Nah, if you're I, here just for BKFC, I love you even more. Because I look, I don't care that much about UFC and stuff like that. I'm here for BKFC as well. But we have to go through the trending thing so everybody's happy. I have to make everybody happy. Let's continue through the trending. Why don't we? Look, Rob thinks I'm being too nice. Nah, I, <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> he does. Oh, and, and that's one of the topics is the dislike button going away. And, you know, I'm going to get to that as well because I think that's something that we need to I think you about. should give us a like right now if you're watching. That's what I think, Rob. I think <laughs> we should get likes. <laughs> nah, I, love, likes I absolutely love out. the fans, but it's going to be a variety, like you said. It is. And it, speaking of variety, let's talk about was it last night? It was late, so I didn't get to see it. Uh, one, one fighting. Championship, wow. Man, wow. What was up with that dude where, where do i even want to you know unwrap that so eddie alvarez is controversial loss you know shots to the back of the head he's already you know um championing for it to get overturned so he he has an l so uh he of got course DQ'd. he wants overturned yeah you know, he, he's already saying that it that's not what occurred even more so the more shocking thing is demetrius johnson his first loss he's in the he's in the mix of being the goat you know, the greatest of all time, you know, he had one hand down in the UFC. If you have any, you know, if you're not fully, if you have one hand down, you cannot get need. Uh-huh. So he called a strict knee to the face, which is legal yeah. in their rules. I mean, what a knocked out immediately. We're seeing some of the footage here. I mean, I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't get to see it. I saw some clips online, so I can't speak sure. fairly of so it. So like Demetrius can. Johnson is a legal win. So nothing bad happened. Nothing bad occurred. What what ha- transpired was in the rules and regulations. But that's the difference between one, you know, one's rules and, you know, UFC's. And it's funny you bring that up because we've had discrepancy here with our rules in BKFC. We talked about that yeah, last week. Exactly. And, and we're, we're getting the refs and everybody more in tune with what's going on. So we don't have the mm-hmm. weird decisions and the controversial decisions. We want clear cut decisions. There's nothing worse. It gives us something to talk about. But I know as a fan, there's nothing worse when you get pissed off, you paid money or you watch you invest your time in something. You're like, that was that was bunk. Exactly. A bunch of bunk. Where did I get that word? Bunk. I like bunk. Yeah. <laughs> bunch of junk bunk. That's what that was. So we're, we're working on that as well. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about, aside from that, I mean, is have you seen? This is completely different. This is boxing now, but Tyson Fury. Have you seen this man, dude? He looks amazing, what? man. We have a photo amazing. of him somewhere. This guy looks incredible. He was like a fat tub of goo, and I don't. I mean that with respect because he was big, man. He yeah. got really fat. I think he had some substance abuse issues, like that kind of yeah, stuff he happens. Was a, he was in a dark place. Yeah. Even in his fight, you can see his last fight. Um, he looked great. But I mean, his Joshua fight, I think that's booked. You know, that is booked. I think they're working on a venue right now. They're, they're solidifying that. But I mean, he looks like an, an amazing shape. He's gone from night and day. Look at this. And he's a bare knuckle. Bo- he's got bare knuckle Little boxing roots, family. Yeah, yeah he's bare knuckle so, roots. Yeah. I'll, damn, dude, I'll do anything to get that dude in. Tyson Fury would be great to be in BKFC. Would Hell you like yeah, to see man. Tyson Fury in BKFC? Yeah, dude, Let us know in the comments can, section. I'm that, sure you would. That guy can throw some haymakers. He can throw some jabs. And he can talk the talk, man. But, but dude. He's, he's, 
He's awesome. That weight loss, again, insane. Yeah. I mean, he's a fighter dropping weight, going up and down, and he gained a lot. And I, I was a little worried for Tyson there for a minute, so I'm glad he's doing a lot better. We'd love to see him here yeah, one day. We'll see if that can ever happen. The Gypsy King has uh, lost his weight. He looks great. And if when yeah. we talk about weight classes and weight, we got to do what we're going to do yeah, here. This is, this is a big... Do we have a drum roll sound effect? I don't know. <laughs> we're promising this. BKFC official weight classes. Uh, you've seen them online. Mm-hmm. These are now the official weight classes. We're going to go through them so you can learn more about it. And as you look at these official weight classes, you're going to see they're similar to MMA, the weight classes like that, with a little bit of a boxing twist in there with the cruiserweight. Cruiserweight is added, which yeah. is coming from the boxing weight classes. So I'm excited to see these as well because we're learning about these together. I just kind of have a loose overview before I go on the show. That's how it goes. I think we have a graphic. Let's put that up. Boom, 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 boom. There it is. I'm so good nice, at doing that. Man. How that works. Yeah. Uh, let's look. You can see them here. I mean, you can, if you, in case you're listening on the podcast and you're not watching live, we'll just go through them. Flyweight, 125. Uh, of course, Bantamweight, 126 to 135. 136 to 145. Featherweight, 146 to 155. Lightweight, 156 to 165. Welterweight, 166 to 175. Middleweight, I guess that's where me and you would be, Rob. Middleweights. Uh, I would never be in the squared circle. <laughs> My fat ass is no, in the heavyweight I, I, right I, now, I, man. No, I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might be. I actually might be a light heavyweight. One seventy six to one eighty five, one eighty six to two hundred five with the cruiserweights. Uh, that's like we said, the boxing twist we put yep. in there, and of course two hundred six plus and up for the heavyweights. Uh, I, I think there's some good weight classes. I think we're going to see some great competition. We're seeing more and more people come into BKFC, and we're seeing more and more of these weight classes. Um, it's good that we've actually established weight classes that people can kind of put their hands on and look at and because now we have them. I mean, we yeah, didn't it's, have them it's, it's more substance. Last week we announced Thank you. two. Yep. Uh, we announced the heavyweights, uh, their rankings, their official rankings. And again, after every event, these rankings are going to change. The more events that we're going to do, it's going to fluctuate. So just stay tuned, man. It's going to be a, uh, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. And we're going to get to the rankings later, right? Yeah. Not only are we going to get to the official rankings. Um, I'm going to throw in my two cents of where I think, I know. It always makes me like, nervous dudes. when you say that. <laughs> but um, I'm going to break it down, man. I mean, I got some flack on it last time. I, got, I caught some heat. You know, that's cool. Here, yeah, here's my rankings, and I'm going to go through why I have them ranked, along with my power rankings for the uh, the official tournament and why that's going to differ. Okay, well, we also, you know, we have the official, I should uh, really state this, the official BKFC mm-hmm. rankings. We said this earlier. You see other ones everywhere, but the official BKFC rankings, we're going to have them in a couple minutes, and we're also going to go through Rob's rankings too, see how they differ. Uh, I always like seeing that too because they hand us the sheet, all the combat sports insiders, you know, they, they rank these. And yep. we'll see if you're a fighter watching right now, we're going to see where you rank. I know there's already been some talk about it I saw on social media, so I'm excited to do that too. Zion Thomason's in the chat. I, that was funny because I nice, saw him talking man. about the rankings with somebody. I think it was NYC promoter or club promoter guy. Okay. They, they were on there talking about where Zion should be ranked, and they were saying that Zion deserves to be ranked as number one. And, uh, you know, I, I'm a broadcast journalist. I have no mm-hmm. opinion on that. I, I can't dispute it. Zion's a very talented fighter. Um, but He's on my list, man. And okay, I'm he's on your that. list. and we're, That's Rob's list, but we need to see if you're on the official BKFC yep. list because I love Rob too, but his list doesn't really matter that much. I mean, it does. It's an opinion. It's, it's an like opinion. A, it's fun. That other thing that everyone's got one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's got one. A Rob. We've all got a Rob. You're yeah. right. Oh, I mean, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, coming up in a couple minutes, we have the Marcel Stamps interview. We're excited for that, too. Uh, I think he's on deck. I think we have him getting ready in the green room, mm-hmm. the Zoom green room. The digital green room. Yeah, we'll be talking to him in but a couple minutes. But we have Nate Shook live. And Nate's coming in live to the studio, man. Matchmaker Nate Shook will be here later on the show. Marcel Stamps, there's a <clears> boatload <throat> of things we can talk to with him. This guy, like we said earlier, University of Alabama football standout. He's had his time here in BKFC. I think one of, if not the best pure athletes, not just fighters, athletes in the BKFC. Uh, and he's fighting a former, well, not, they're not former Marines. They're Marines. Mm-hmm. They're always Marines. Marine for life. Yeah, Marine Mike Richmond. So we'll talk to him about that. Talk a little bit about Marcel Stamps' career. He's had such a, uh, only what, two or three fights so far at BKFC, but it's been such an, yep, three, got I think. Three, two, two and one. And it's been such mm-hmm. an interesting career for the way he's gone. We're going to get into that because if you remember, he fought Joey Beltran uh, for the heavyweight yeah, title. From, going up in weight from uh, 175 to 205. Big jump. Or 218, man. I'm sorry. That's, that's huge. It's a big and jump. How he does that. 218. I, I, and I apparently, the, the reason he fought Joey is because we couldn't match him. Nobody nah, wanted to man. fight him. Yeah, Marcel. too scary. So what's that tell you? And he had, a, he had a great showing against Joey. We're going to talk about that with Marcel Stamps in just a couple minutes as he gets ready to come on with us. Also, Marcel, if you look at the fact this guy, he tells me that his time in football, mm-hmm. uh, it kind of prepared him 
It prepared him for what was to come with BKFC. I mean, look, college football is no joke. See, pro football, I feel like you're fight, you're, you're not really fighting for a contract, but you're fighting to get re-signed. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to get hurt. These guys in college, they're going hard. I like watching college better than pro half the Go time. for broke, man. You have to. You yeah, know, I, you're, you're trying to get that NFL contract, man. You, there's no other option out there. So you have to put it put in the work. You didn't. You don't have the contract. You have to be as hungry as hell. And yeah, man, I, I personally like watching college football more than I do NFL. So do I. And it's going to be interesting to see, um, you know, again, he's fighting a Marine, Mike Richmond. Mm -hmm. uh, Marines prepare for combat. Uh, I believe that Mike Richmond said he's had like, I, I don't want to overstate or understate. Yeah. I think he said three tours uh, of duty, which is insane Thank to you. me. Thank, Thank you. Yeah, I agree. Service, Thank yeah. you for that. We appreciate you, Mike. Uh, and, you know, you get ready to go to a war, like a true war. And mm -hmm. that's got to be hard mentally, right? Mm -hmm. But now he's getting a different kind of war. He's walking the aisle to the squared circle, BKFC. It's a different kind of mental preparation, but it's still mental preparation. And I think it's interesting because he has that. We're going to see if more self stamps. He said it before, but we're going to get more into it. Is the football the mental preparation? How much has that helped him? I want to find out about sure. that because he's used to going to a different kind mm -hmm. of war too. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I wonder what weight Marcel was when he played football. I'd like to know that as well. Yeah, I, I want to ask Marcel Stamps. You know, you, you're fighting someone that's literally prepared to die, to mm. kill or literally be killed in combat. True. Does that scare you? Because that scares the shit out of me, man. I would, you know, look looking across the ring like this person knows that that they're either going to die or they have to kill somebody. Mm -hmm. And now they're putting into a, com a combat sport. It's like, are they going to snap or then try to kill me, man? I mean, well, I talked to Mike Richmond off the air as he prepared mm -hmm. for the fight. And he kind of said, yeah, mental preparation is a big thing going in. And that's really helped. And he said it's mm -hmm. a different kind of war he's walking into, but it, it's very similar to that. And again, we'll find out more about Marcel, Mar, Mar, excuse me, Marcel Stamps, Swift, they call him Swift, Marcel yeah. Stamps, great, great, uh, great name. Um, and, you know, I also want to find out more about Marcel. He, look, every speaking, time I, speaking of Marcel, what? an Alabama guy, and that's where BKFC 17 is going to be at, uh, going to be at, April 30th. Me. Absolutely, Live on man. the BK TV app, BKFC. Birmingham, <laughs> Alabama. The first time that we're there, man. It's going to be an exciting Debut event. in Birmingham. Yeah. But he's a local guy that keeps saying that. So I, I wonder if the crowd being on his side, sometimes mentally that can help you. I've talked to fighters that say they don't even hear the crowd. They don't care. They're going to war. There's other fighters that do hear the crowd, and it helps them. It propels them through. Or if he's getting booed, which Marcel mm -hmm. probably won't be. And how can he boo a Marine anyway? Uh, so who knows what's yeah, going to happen. But yeah, that's gonna he's, a big, one, he's a big hometown guy. He's like a huge star in Alabama. Absolutely. And man. we're going to be, be there, exciting. and it's going to be awesome. Awesome, and we can't wait to have Marcel Stamps on with us in just a couple minutes. Also, later on today, we're going to be talking about, we said, the 175-pound rankings. If you're just joining us, you can find out more about them. And we have the KOs of the week. I love them as well. We have some great ones, great ones planned. But we're going to be back with Marcel Stamps in just a second. Stay close as we talk about, what are we doing here? Tiger Life? Is it Tiger Life? It better be. I love my Tiger Life. Yeah, I Cheers. Love mine. I'm already like <laughs> Fighting Championship makes its Alabama debut Friday, April 30th. Watch as knockout artists Josh the Hammer Burns and Dylan Bad Boy Kleckler knuckle up in a heavyweight title eliminator. And BKFC vet Marcel Stamps prepares for war with the undefeated Marine Mike Richmond. Plus eight more bare knuckle fights. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship 17, Friday, April 30th, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Download it now at BKFC.com. All right, we are back, and we have Marcel Stamps here, Brian and Rob hanging with you, and we love talking to the fighters, getting to their minds, find out what's going on. Marcel Stamps, of course, Swift, excuse me, Swift Marcel Stamps. He's going to be get facing... Get it right. That's right. He should get it right. Mark, uh, Mike Richmond, the Marine Mike Richmond, coming up at BKFC 16. That's April 30th in our debut in Alabama. Bur Birmingham, Alabama, our debut, and you're like a god. You're like a king in Alabama, Marcel, so it's going to be great to have you on the show. You know you are. Don't be modest. Oh, yeah, it's... it's one of those things, I guess, like you said, when when I play, uh, when you play sports here, man, if I they treat you so, uh, I have I've enjoyed it. Yeah, we enjoy watching you fight the BKFC as well. We enjoyed that for a while. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Marcel Stamps, a, a former huge star uh, on University of Alabama. Alabama, Roll Tide, right? Roll Tide. 
uh, University of Alabama. Yeah. So we're yeah. going to see how his football career helps him translate more into BKFC. We've seen him over time, and we have some great questions for today, tons of questions, but we have to get right to it. Now, Rob, I know you want to start out because we want to kind of look at your career, how it's gone in BKFC, and talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so your debut, BKFC 2, blistering knockout, man. How did you prepare? You know, going into a, a sport that you've never done before, obviously you're an extremely athletic person, as Brian had uh, stated earlier, one, one if not the most athletic uh, best ath pure athlete yeah. we have on the entire roster. Going into BKFC, your first event with us, what was the mindset? How, how do you prepare for something uh, you've never done before? I, I did, and that was probably my hardest fight. That was probably the hardest guy that I fought wow. in MMA and uh, wow. bare knuckle in my career period. For one, I didn't have any film of him, and I'm a big, I'm like Coach Saban, I'm a big film guy. I like to look and see what mm -hmm. guys do. Everybody has tendencies, kind of go back and chop it up. Yeah, people change, but like I also wanted to go and kind of look. Well, I didn't have any video of him. Mm -hmm. We was expecting him to be uh, 5'10", you know, 6'2", I mean, six foot, you know, six foot one. Well, he come there, he was six foot four. Oh, man. Oof. Uh, so that kind of messed my mind up. Well, I'm like, man, you know, like, and when I trained the whole time of being somebody that's between that length and doing my distance, sure. well, this guy's going to have the same amount of distance as I have. So I had to change up on the slide because I didn't know how to adjust yeah. with not seeing him. So, and then I seen him when he come, when he came there, he's from Louisiana. So we already know guys from Louisiana, as long as I fought, they scrap, they, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And I look at him and he already had cuts on his face. Like he had like stitches. So I was like, Oh man, coach, this is going to be one. We're going to, it's a burn, burn burner that we have to like actually, like put some time in because this guy, he's, he's not going anywhere. And then when we did our stare off, you know, like he was just comfortable as I was. So I knew at that time, it was like one of those things that I was going to have to go like prepare wise. Uh, there's not like for a first fight for there, there's not really anything you can prepare to do, like to be honest with you, because it's so different. So all you can do is just go out there. And if you are a person that know how to adjust on the slide and adjust as the moments goes, then you'll, it, it becomes better. Uh, but uh, as far as like this training, I just just did my regular training, like conditioning, um, regular boxing. I didn't change up anything. Um, I knocked him out the first round mm -hmm. and um, he got up. Uh, and then I ended up actually hitting him and, and uh, I backed up with my hand down. And he hit me and dropped me. Uh, I don't even know if a lot of people know, you know, like he dropped me. That's the first time I had been dropped, like hard dropped. That's probably the really? hardest I've been hit. Yeah, he dropped me the second the second round after I knocked him. I knocked him out probably about cold. But he dropped me. I come back and I end up hitting him with the uh, uh, two hook, which I think to this day, they don't even talk about. Hmm. But I think that was probably the most deadly knockout in BKLC if you go back and look at it. I didn't. I saw all of it in slow motion. But when I went back and saw it in actual like, regular speed mm -hmm. oh my god man it was it was pretty crazy we were actually just talking about that before you you called in we were watching that fight we saw some of it last night and the other fights too we saw i know there was another fight you wanted to bring up his second fight you're really into that fight too yeah so marcel your first fight what what weight did you fight at and then you went into uh, the second fight was with kendall grove uh we agreed at 85 i came in both of us came in like 83 okay and with kendall grove what was your weight there 85 and how did you prepare? You obviously have some tape on Kendall Grove. He's a uh, world-renowned mixed martial artist, uh, extremely tall. I did, very man. tall. Yeah, he. he uh, I think him and Joey, man, has the hardest head in the, in the BKOC, <laughs> man. Like, them, them guys take so much damage in the head that I thought, like, with him, when I prepared for him, we already knew that, like, hey, he's probably going to take a lot of damage. And then I had to figure out how to adjust to him. He had, like, I have a almost 80 inch reach, but he has like an 83, 84 inch reach. So oh, that was yeah. the biggest thing I had to try to adjust to is I'm usually the one on the end that has a long, longer reach. Well, he had a longer reach than me. So I had to figure it out. Uh, I didn't think that he was, I'm way more physical. Um, I didn't think that he would be as physical in the later rounds. Like it was still a surprise for me trying to adjust to the BKFC just because it was my second fight. Um, I just ended up adjusting that. People don't even know I broke my hand on that one, too. So I broke my hand uh, with him. When I hit him, you see him touch his face. I broke my hand then. Uh, but I ended up finishing with the same one that I that I broke. But 
I always like to, I always like to, I always, you did push through and we always like to hear it from you guys because then we can go back and watch the ballots and, and see what you're describing. So it's, yeah. it's cool to get like the inside track and, and something I don't know a lot of people know. I know when you went up to fight for the heavyweight title, I mean, Marcel Stamps, you're fighting for the heavyweight title. I think you were at 218 with Joey Beltran. Uh, and okay. what a fight. I mean, what a fight. Uh, can you speak on that fight a little bit? Just get yeah, that, was, Wait, that one was pretty funny too, man. I actually, so we weighed in, me and my coach, we weighed in when I weighed in. When I got there, I was 204. Oof. So we were like, right, what, what are we going to do? Because I was thinking that they wasn't going to let it like go if it did. So I water loaded the like entire time before weighing. I'm here, I'm sitting here trying to hold, not use the bathroom, put as much <laughs> weight as I can on it. And then we still waited on it. It was still like four pounds off. So I ended up uh, trying to keep all my clothes on. So it actually, they didn't make me take them off. So it ended up helping uh, to do it. But uh, with him, I knew I was going to be a little bit faster. Uh, I don't really care about being on the size just because I knew I would be faster. But hold on, Marcel, uh, but, I have to interrupt you. I have to interrupt you. You're putting on all this size, and I've never fought like you, but I'd imagine going up in weight that way and, and in fighting with that kind of weight, I mean, you're going against a guy who might be a little stronger than you because you're not used to fighting that kind of weight, and it's got to be hard to carry that extra weight. Can you speak on that? I mean, that, that had to be hard. You're obviously loaded with water and stuff, too. I, I mean, by the time we wait, by the time the next day that I went in, I probably weight? was like at 208. Like, okay. I, went, I was going, I was back at my walk around weight. Was that your uh, walk around so weight? Yeah, I usually walk around about uh, probably like 205, 202, 205. What so were, I was back down like my regular like walk in, walk in, walk around weight. So it really didn't it didn't affect me as far as so I didn't I didn't gain anything. I really didn't gain anything but like just more water. Out of curiosity, though, when when you played football for University of Alabama, what was your walk around weight then? Same. Uh, about one ninety five, two hundred. But see, people don't realize is you know at at Bama like so with cutting weight is a little bit easier for me. Because even at Bama, when I played there, you know, when we did two a days, you know, I const constantly, when I work out, I probably drop about five, four or five pounds every workout. And I usually work out two, three times a day. But the same thing at Bama, you know, like we had to wake up in the morning, do mat drills at five. And then we had to do team functions, which working out was again, like usually like uh, around noon. And then we practice late at night. So we practice, we're doing things three times a day. And these guys are constantly like rehydrating and, and cutting, dropping weight daily about three, four times. So naturally with a football player with training all the time, they probably dropping about 12 pounds a day every wow. day because of how many times they actually working out uh, wow. from sweat. You know, like it's, it's sweat, you know, that we're doing. But like I said, they actually doing it over and over and over daily. So that so, was a big thing that made it easy for me with uh, adjustment were coming. So what you're saying is, I, I, what I'm getting from this is that playing for University of Alabama, being a football fighter, has helped you mentally, probably physically, going up and down in weight. And, I mean, do you think that in the BKFC, it's a different sport, but inside the squared circle, how much has being a University of Alabama former football star helped you? Uh, probably every bit of it, just because if you think about it, you know, like, everybody wants to say, like, you know, it's the BKFC, it's MMA, it's boxing, all this different stuff. At the end of the day, it's your mental – uh, mentally how you prepare yourself, uh, you know, and I think like with me in the position that I was in, as far as at Bama, I think, you know, being around a bunch of five-star guys constantly having to work, you know, for these guys that was better than me, the same thing with like BKLC, there's guys that's better than me that I don't get this for me. I don't think about like how much better they are than me, but I always find there's a way that everybody can be beat. So, uh, my mentality from uh, playing at football and playing at Bama, I think was the biggest transition that helps me the most. So uh, obviously we know that your opponent coming up, BKFC 16, April 30th, bkfc.com to get the app. You want to check that out. It's going to be awesome. Uh, Marine Mike Richmond. This guy has been on tours of duty. He's been a Marine. He's mentally tough. He said that it helped, that helps him as he walks to the squared circle. You're saying that it, it helps you mentally, physically, everything, being a former University of Alabama football star. I mean, is there any intimidation factor? I know it's alpha male. You're probably not going to say it, but be honest. Curtain down. And Tim, come on now. I just thought Joy Beltran <laughs> underweight. You think I'm intimidated by anybody? I, I, I was, I, I'm, I'm letting you speak on that because I know I wouldn't fight Joey. I'm just Joey. saying, come on now. Come on now. <laughs> I, I thought, you know, you know what I mean? How many guys are actually going to do that? You know, like, and actually be able to survive, you know, like four rounds that I thought I pretty much won the first three rounds easy. And um and that was where it broke. So I broke my hand. Like I, I don't know if you go back and look at the film with him. I actually threw a punch, uh, uppercut. And when I threw the uppercut, he actually blocked with his elbow. And you can see mm -hmm. me when I'm going up Oof. to hit. 
and uh, it broke then, but the adrenaline it didn't it didn't wear off until like the fourth round. Uh, but like at like I said, mentally wise, man, I'm like I just went against the heavyweight temp of the world. So, I got it. And that like I, the heavyweight temp of the world, that's like pretty much the you know cream of the crop of anything. Right, right? We said all the time. Guys, He's the yeah, baddest SLB guys. walk on the planet, dude. I mean, if, you, if you're the BKFC yeah, so, champion, you have to be. Yeah, and I'm like, for me to go there, that I'm really not intimidated by anybody that's smaller than that. This guy was probably 275 when we fought. True, true. And I think, now, the <laughs> thing I'm concerned with, Marcel, that I'm wondering if you're concerned about, is you talk about hurting your hand mm -hmm. in the Joey match and in the match before that. Is there any uh, strategy you're going to do differently to protect your hands? I mean, is it, is it more likely to hurt your hands in this match coming up? Does that enter your mind? It don't. I still try to knock everybody the fuck out. I don't really care who it is. At the end of the day, like we can, we can, we can deal with the damage later. <laughs> yeah. So you're going into this, and this is for uh, as, unless I'm wrong, someone can correct me for the 175 pound tournament. Yeah. And I saw that you commented, someone posted that there is a 175 pound matchup or something that's floating around. Nothing made official, and you had some words to that. Can you can you kind of speak to the? Uh, Speak to that comment. Yeah, I, just, I did. I just thought it was funny that, you know, like you would uh, kind of um, put two guys together and do do like something like that. Hey, we're just going to put two guys together and, and that's what we're going to have the belt, you know, for go for the belt. But then if you go back and think about it, it is a smart move as far as with the uh, actual, you know, BKLC itself, because why not? You got two guys that's highly known. You got to have somebody that's high up that everybody can build to try to fight. So why put them in the tournament or anything to actually, you know, fight them, like fight to get up when you can just go ahead and make, you know, both one of the two of them a big star when they're already a star and just bring more to them. And now it makes all these guys that's up under them trying to build up to fight them. It actually makes it more bigger for them. So uh, just me after thinking about it, I thought it was just probably a smarter move just to end up being if, if the guys do do it because it's setting the standard. Yeah, it is. And we have uh, actually we have matchmaker Nate Shook coming on in a little bit. We're going to ask him about that because we still don't know. I mean, we saw it reported online mm -hmm. like you did. We don't we've heard it's not even official yet. So we don't know it's, if that's happening. To be honest with you, I think it's, it's, it's smart. And to be honest with you, if they end up fighting in Miami and they're trying to fill that stadium, I think that that's the only way that they're going to fill it, to be honest with you. They got to have two caliber fighters like that, that everybody has known to fight for something, you know, that everybody's thinking that, OK, it's a prize position that they have to fight for. So that just makes, I think that just brings more attention to uh, BKFC itself uh, than to have them fight in, like, say with me. I ain't, I'm not like that great, but then to have them match up with a bunch of nobodies to go and then try to have them go for a belt later when you don't get as many people watching. But if you got both of those of that caliber right now, like, yeah. I think you'll get more people watching and then just try to have everybody build up the fight. So, at the end of the day with me, I don't really care who has it because if I get a chance to fight for it, I'm going to fight for it. So it makes more business sense is what you're saying, and, and I understand yeah, it that does. as well. Yeah, it does. So uh, let's talk about your fight coming up, BKFC 16, April 30th, Marine Mike Richmond. Uh, how do you envision this fight going? I mean, have you envisioned it? Are you one of those guys that just envisions it in your mind? Uh, I do, you know, I vision what I want to do, but then, like I said, uh, it's fighting. So things, you know, you have to adjust things and things change as we go. I do. Have, I, 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 I really think that a lot of the things that he would do, he'll do a lot of, I think pressure, you know, he's a sort of guy, he's going to try to get inside. Uh, I've seen that he, he likes to do a lot of like, uh, he's not knocked a couple guys out and stopped a couple guys just by going overhands and stuff like that. But it's just the normal with guys that's shorter than me. Everybody want to go body overhand, body overhand or, or grab. That's just natural for somebody that's shorter. When I, if I'm shorter and I'm fighting somebody that's taller, that's where I'm going at. I'm trying to go to body and then overhead over, over the, you know, over the top just because at the end of the day, we're hoping that they end up not blocking and not sitting in the right position. So I feel like he'll put a lot of pressure on. Like obviously he's been fighting. I think, I think BKFC just just uh, uh, like me to have all these guys that have a million fights. They don't want to throw me anybody that's garbage. <laughs> they just want to give me all these guys that's been you know been through the record and just got like mentally you know just like there. So you know for me I'm like I can't I can't complain about it because everybody else don't want to do it. But if you go back and look, man, I'm like all these guys on fall I got plenty of fights, man. And I'm like I ain't really been in this fight game for like five four or five years. They throw me these guys that got 15 to like 40 fights. Well, you're Marcel Stamps, uh, Swift Marcel. I'm sure you wouldn't have it any other way. We, we enjoy watching you fight. I, I wouldn't, man. I, I do. You know, like I say, everybody else won't take it. Everybody else want to take the bomb, you know, and, and, and pad their record. So I don't mind fighting these guys like that, the guys that I know that's going to bring me 
uh, bring the fight to me and make me excel and make me raise the bar because I want to be good. I don't. I want to be great. I don't want to just be good like the other guys. I'm trying to be at another level. I'm trying to be one of those guys that everybody talks about when I'm done with this game. Well, we love your charisma. We love your fighting style. And we're excited to see the fans just come unglued when you walk down to the squared circle in your hometown where you're a huge star from University of Alabama football. Marcel Stamps taking on Mike Richmond, the Marine versus the Swift one. Uh, that goes down April 30th at BKFC 17. Thanks for coming on today, Marcel. It was a great talking to you, man. Appreciate it, man. Look for uh, a lot more of you, man. This is going to be some big things. Man. I've changed a lot in my game. I've added some stuff. Uh, so I'm excited to see what, you know, how this turns out, because I've added a few things that uh, people hadn't seen over the last uh, uh, six months. So I'm kind of excited about it. Well, we're all excited. You can tune in BKFC.com for the BKTV app. See Marcel, St- Marcel Stamps. I can say your name right. I paid to speak and I'm not doing good today. <laughs> Marcel Stamps right. versus Mike Richmond. I know who you are. The world knows who you are. They're going to know more about you, Marcel Stamps. Coming up, BKFC 17. Let's head to commercial and we'll be back with the official 175-pound rankings from BKFC. And we're going to talk about Rob's rankings, too. It's going to be a great time. Stay close for that. Thanks, Marcel. Welcome to the world of Bare Knuckle TV. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $3.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including unlimited access to the full archive of BKFC pay-per-views, behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live bare knuckle fights from around the globe. You can access it anywhere you want, anytime you want, instantly on most streaming devices. It's available right now on the Bare Knuckle TV app, over 1,000 hours of on-demand content, uncut and uncensored. All here, anytime you want, anywhere you want, for only $3.99 a month. Subscribe now exclusively at BKTVapp.com. Very good poll. It's a ve- it's a great poll. We're back on. Why not talk about it? Off the air, we talk. The show exactly. keeps going. Yeah. So we're, we're talking about YouTube. The question of the day. The yeah. question of the week. Should YouTube remove the dislike button? We put a poll up. We wanted to know whatever you know everyone's thoughts on it. Question one, one. Yes, remove it. Life is always thumbs up. No, keep it. Life is not always thumbs up. And option number three, Chuck Norris created the thumbs up button. <laughs> Chuck Norris created the thumbs up button actually has 15% of the votes. People love Chuck. Yeah. Yes, remove it only has 8% and no surprise to me. Maybe it's a surpri- surprise to you. Probably not. 77% of people want to keep the thumbs up and uh, Rob, Rob, they don't want to remove the dislike button. You're absolutely correct. That's no shock to me at all. Yeah. Uh, especially with our fan mm-hmm. base. I mean, other fan bases may be different because they get, like to give out these participation awards and stuff, which drive me nuts. It's either like or dislike, and I'm fine with that. We like constructive criticism. You like us or you dislike us, and then maybe you'll come to like us. If you don't, oh, well, you dislike us. It, it's fine. It doesn't hurt our feelings. We're just mm-hmm. trying to do a good show, and I think that anything like that, like if I like something, I'm going to like it. Yeah. Do you make use of the like-dislike button a lot when you're on YouTube? I, I actually do, man. I do, and I gauge you know, some, some content based off of that. You know, I take that into consideration, and sometimes it's comical that there's a, a boatload of dislike buttons, but there's also a boatload of, boat, boatload of like buttons. Uh, so you got to take the good with the bad. And I have a couple of comments from people right now what they're actually saying, on, and, and they're weighing in on it. What are they saying? All right, uh, Trevor Lap. Uh, he's got nine uh, nine upvotes. Two types of dictatorships in the world. One, we live <laughs> in a box, can see the bars that contain us, prison, and the other, we live in a box with no bars, and we think we're free. All right. And Mm. one more from Stuck in 2020. Great name. They're mad that YouTube Rewind is the most disliked video, um, which is true. You know, YouTube releases their Rewind of the Year, and it's usually the most disliked um, um, video on their platform. That's scary. But me personally, I think we keep the dislike button. It helps gauge whether you're doing a good job or doing a bad job. I'm not here for participation trophies. No. Yeah, I said it. I hate so. them. I can't stand them. What a waste. Yeah, I mean, people dislike our, our our content, and when we engage with them, though, what did you dislike about it? Like, you, if you keep saying, like, everything is great, everything is great, that's not the truth. No, what did you dislike that. about it? What did you not like about our product? Let us know so we can make those changes. We want to make, so it, better make it better I agree, I agree. And, uh, you know, I think right now, the, like I've been saying the whole show, hit the like button for us, though. I would like that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, Contrary it, to everything we just <laughs> spoke about, smash that like button hit the subscribe uh, i i agree with rob i'm, sure. I'm half joking but it is nice to see the likes oh but it's no you're spilling the tiger oh, life this we've is what happens down. live all right so oh, let's boy. uh get into this is what we've been talking about <laughs> as i get the tiger life off my arm here thank you rob uh we have the official 
175 pound rankings, the middleweight yeah, rankings. Yeah, man. Uh, these are the official from BKFC offices. So the ones you've seen online, you Bring can do that. Line. You can talk about like Rob's going to tell us what his rankings are too. But these are the official ones that were handed to us by BKFC, picked by Combat Sports Insiders. And we have them all for you right now. We have the top five and we're going to go through them. I know some fighters were in, in the chat. I know Zion was there. Mm-hmm. I don't know who else is there. So uh, they're trying to see it. It's a big... Um, thing to talk about it's a big thing to talk about because these guys have not been officially ranked yet so this is a huge deal look these guys are fighting for their lives for money for the for everything Absolutely. for us for the fans so it's interesting to see where they fall and i know they're very interested to see as well we're gonna go from number five to number one are you ready for number five hold on man let's do the drum roll you gotta do a drum roll <laughs> Clark number five. style number five <laughs> francisco ritchie uh, a fellow italian yeah, i like absolutely. that a now francisco's two and oh uh, this guy, you can see him fighting. He, he's a great fighter. He's fun to watch. He, he had an amazing match. Uh, what was it? Where was the last fight he was in? Is that's this one? That's versus Noah Cutter. Yeah. Yeah, Noah Cutter. Uh, what an amazing bout, dude. I mean, he got knocked down. He came back to win it. Talk about heart, man. Talk about heart and skill. That guy, uh, number five, man, rightfully so. Yeah, I mean, he's got big heart. And, and in BKFC or any sport, but especially mm-hmm. BKFC, you have to have heart. You have to. You're just not going to exist without that. You can't be some guy that walks out there and just gives up. Doesn't yep. happen. Uh, let's move on. Congratulations, Francisco. That's a great ranking. Let's move on to number four. Number four, we get another drum roll for this? I don't know. Do we? Brrr, all right. <laughs> that was so off cue. Four. It's all right. It worked. Number four. Uh, Kimon Evans is number four. Comes in number four. Uh, how Watch do you feel about that? Watch out for that guy, man. I see. Watch out for this dude. He is deadly. He is so ridiculously fast. He's got the range. He's got the head movement. He's ultra fast. I mean, that guy is going to be rocking the division. He is. And I should also say, as we're going through these rankings... These are people that have all declared they're going to fight at 175 pounds. Some of them may have not fought there, but they've declared the yep. weight officially for 175 pounds. So if you're like, what are you talking about? These guys aren't fighting 175. They are going to be fighting for 175. That's where they want to be. I want to put that out there as well. Mm-hmm. So right now, number five, Francisco Ritchie. Uh, number four, Kimon Evans. As we head to numero three, Trace for our Spanish watchers and listeners. As we get a drum roll from Rob. Oh, well, no. <laughs> That's just knocking on the door. Oh, we got a drum roll. That's awesome. Look at that. The guys in the truck, they're wonderful. We love them. You shoot yourselves. You guys are amazing. Shoot yourselves and wave because you guys are amazing. You came up with a drum roll that quickly for us. That's awesome. Look, they're not even cutting themselves. We gave you our camera. We don't have it. <laughs> oh, they don't have a camera today. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you guys in the truck. Thank you for that. Uh, we're going to go to number three. Uh, this, I, I think, is well-deserved. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that you're going to have your thoughts on this as well, this guy. He's incredible. He's one of our youngest fighters. I love his name. The Z-Man, Zion Thompson. Tomlinson, excuse me. The Z-Man, Zion Tomlinson, he is number three ranked middleweight for BKFC Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Watch this guy. Watch him. I mean, his last performance, BKFC 16. I mean, all, uh, another guy with heart, another guy with skill. Uh, 2-0. and I think his first bout was with toe of the line, second bout with BKFC. Awesome, man. It's really exciting. Another young, you know, dude well, is just going to... Uh, Dominate the, the other thing that's cool is he's man. one of the youngest fighters mm-hmm. on the roster, so we're going to see him hopefully as he gets as he gets more experience climb. I know he's had two pro fights, both bare knuckle. I believe that's this is like what he's doing, so this, he's this only going to climb it. further. Yeah, uh, and, and he was dude. I was following him. I mean, he was talking a whole lot of you know a whole lot of trash before his bout. This guy's getting knocked out. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna you know put this division on watch. You know everybody says that. He backed it up. He means it. He talked shit. You know and he I mean? backed it up. He came in there swinging, not backing down, not you know just pressing forward. Exciting fighter. Excited to see where the Z-Man ends up. Uh, and, and congratulations to you, Z-Man. I know you're in the chat. Uh, number three in the world, bare knuckle fighting championship middleweight. I think that's not something to uh, not be proud of. You should be very proud mm-hmm. of that. As we head to number two, dose for the Spanish-speaking fans. It's the only Spanish drum I know, roll, by please, the way. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Let's hit it. Where's the drum roll? I love the. Joke. I love how I have some kind of control, and not my real life, but on the show, I have some kind of control. <laughs> I can say ask for things. Number two, uh, this guy—he's uh, a well-known fighter inside, outside BKFC. We're glad to have him. He is ready. Tiago Alves, number two, fighting out of ATT. He had his uh, debut fight against Julian Lane. Uh, of course, what what an amazing five-round war, man! Oh, it sure was. It sure was. I believe it was a split decision. But Tiago and comes got, in at number two. Yep. And he got cut up, man. You know, Julian Lane gave him a run. That was the best Julian Lane that I've seen literally in the past 10 years. Both of them came in like there was no tomorrow. And, you know, take your hat off to both fighters. But Tiago just, you know, he came in. He solidified his game plan. 
Well, I got think it's win. interesting too that Tiago, when I was in ring interviewing him for the post fight, mm-hmm. you said he got cut up. I just remember staring at this gash on his face and just filling up with blood. And I'm just like, this is one of my one of my first events here. And I'm thinking, wow, this stuff. I said, welcome to your BKFC debut. And he's like, yeah, he seemed to really enjoy it. I've seen the guy. I've been there. I've been a fly on the wall at ATT watching mm-hmm. the guy train. He trains so hard. He's such an athlete. He's been around for years. And the guy just he's fought. I think he said his first fight. He was like 15 and had to lie about his age <laughs> in Brazil or something. Like that's insane. This guy, he's the real deal. He's number two. Tiago Alves. Now, what you've all been waiting for, let's go for our number one numero uno, uno for the Spanish speaking fans. Uh, I guess we get a drum roll for this one, too. Well, it really does work when I say that. Number one, he holds the fastest KO in combat sports history. His name is Yuli Diaz at three seconds, which I think is still being contested. That counts for something. We got a lot of media publicity off that. You're going to see it coming up here. Number one, Yuli Diaz, ranked number one middleweight in the entire world. And you'll see the knockout here. It's it's pretty insane. I'm gonna be yeah, quiet. don't blink. Boom! That's it. Done. So, I thought he was going to hurt himself jumping over the ropes there when that happened. you got to be careful, Yuli. We gotta, you're number one ranked in the world right now. We have to make sure you take care of yourself. Don't be jumping over the ropes. But you're number one. I mean, Yuli, Yuli's a guy that um, we've seen him fight, I think, twice in BKFC. Two KOs. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we said, he holds the world record for the quickest knockout. And um, I think he had a first-round knockout of Brian Maxwell as well. So two first-round knockouts. Uh, and, you know, that's why Yuli's number one. Again, these are given to us mm-hmm. by BKFC officials. There's Yuli, number one, numero uno in the world. Congratulations, Yuli Diaz. And to run through those rankings again, look at Yuli. Look at his, Look at all that gold. He's got more gold, I think, in his teeth than I have the in my crazy, whole The crazy thing about life. Yuli Diaz is in the ring, absolute monster. Yep. Scary as you know what. Uh, outside of the ring, nicest guy. Exactly, nicest guy in the world. Um, great to talk to. Just all around great person, man. So number one, deserving. So I agree. Uh, I know you have your rankings yeah, too, but before we, we get to, before we do, I want to just go through the rankings one more time from right. t- from bottom mm-hmm. to top, five to one. Francisco Ricci is number five. Number four, Kimon Evans. Number three, the Z-Man, Zion Tomlinson. Number two, Tiago Alves. And number one, Yuli Diaz. Congratulations. They are your official BKFC middleweight rankings uh, that you can talk about and you can talk about in the chat. Do you agree with us? Do you agree? I shouldn't say us, them, BKFC insiders. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with them? Do you not? We'd love to hear your opinions. But Rob, I know you always are a man of strong opinion. You have your opinions too. I've got two. And let me uh, preface everything as to why I have two different rankings, right? Right. So my first rankings are the fighters who currently or have already fought in the 175 pound division. Okay. The fighting rankings uh, that were provided are going to be, um, I guess, elaborated further within the tournament. And that's how the rankings are going to be situated. And we should say the first mm-hmm. round of this tournament is, of course, we just talked to him, Marcel, Marcel Stamps, Stamps. Earl on the show versus Marine Mike Richmond. And that's coming up at BKFC 17, April 30th. Mm-hmm bkfc.com for more. I have found out before you get into it. I just saw him. Mm-hmm. Yuli Diaz entered the chat. He's going to awesome. take his, I'm sure he's taking that's, his adulations. Great, Yuli, man. congratulations. Of Thanks course, for joining the, us, Yuli. The Don't Blink podcast. Don't blink because you get knocked out. <laughs> Yuli, number one. Jake Bostwick just came wow, in too. A lot of joined. fighters are awesome, all joining man. now. They're all in there talking about it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> well, let me get to my... Re- uh, uh, you now know. you should be nervous because now they're I all know. listening to Rob's rankings. All right, so again, this is the fighters that have fought at 175, all right, in... I have my top four. Dave Rickles, number four. Okay, Zion man. Tomlinson, number three. Francisco Ritchie, number two. Okay. Kimon Evans is number one in the 175. Top four for me. So these are the people you said that have they actually have fought, fought 175. 175. They haven't declared what, it, just fought. Correct. Okay. These are my rankings based off of that. All right. Now, 175, what, what I call my power rankings. Now, we've thrown everybody together into Love the it. mix. Here all right, what's going on with this phone? All right, <laughs> get a better phone, man. Uh, dude. I have an Apple sitting at home. I haven't switched over. I know. I I've heard about it for months. Andrew. When are you gonna switch? <laughs> All right. So in a tie for one, two, three, four. All right. So this is my runner-up. So this would be the sixth spot. Julian Lane, Zion Tomlinson. What for number six? For number six, this is my runner-up spot for 175 pound. The tournament of where I would rank people in power and and. Can I comment on sure. Julian Lane? The ranking Julian Lane. Look. Julian Lane, uh, from what I can see and mm-hmm. what I've studied with BKFC, his record, I believe, is one in three. Mm-hmm. Now, you can argue, and people did Tough argue. Tough opponents, though, man. They, these, these guys weren't just dudes, well, you know, bums. That's they true. Were like, it's just Leonard Garcia, yeah. uh, Jim Allers. I think he holds a win over uh, Tom Schof. And, you know, the other guy he lost to was Tiago Alves. Yeah. And a lot of people Dude, would that contest is that. like literally the, some, if not the four toughest in those divisions. I mean, that's something to be said. And that's but what kind I'm of, saying that's is if you're ranking him, this is what, what bothers me. Like, we really need, I, I don't know, 
well, this, in my thought, mm -hmm. you have to look at the competition these guys have faced, okay? Sure. So he's had all that stiff competition. And again, the Tiago Alves one, it was a great fight to watch. It was split decision. And some people were saying Julian took that one. Some people were saying Tiago took it. Obviously, sure. split decision. I'm talking about yep. the fans. It was a buzz after that bout. Yeah. Everybody was talking about that. So I do feel like, I don't know what the rest of your rankings are. We'll find out. But Julian Lane... Ah, I feel like he deserves a little bit of higher ranking. That's my opinion. I got you, man. That's my runner-up. That's my runner-up. Number five, Francisco Ritchie, 2-0. Very talented. I think, exactly. Uh, you already spoke to that. Uh, number four, Diago Alves. Um, okay. I'd like to see more. This is the problem with BKFC. Great. One fight, I'd love to rank him higher. He's ultra-talented, you know, UFC star, mixed martial artist, tough as nails. He's got the win over Julian Lane, the best Julian Lane, like I said earlier, yeah. that I've seen in the past 10 years. Hold right. on, hold on, hold on. Before you go, let's speak mm -hmm. on this a little bit. You're saying uh, Tiago Alves' debut, okay? I agree with you, and that is the hard thing with ranking these fighters. Every time I read the rankings when they give them to us, I go, it, it's hard because you have a guy that's 1-0, but we have to also let you know, because I don't know if you're new to this, these are rankings only within the BKFC. I mean, we respect what you've done outside of BKFC, but these are just for your fights in BKFC. We don't look at your outside career because we're just doing BKFC rankings. You need to understand that. And when you look at Tiago, he's got a name, and he brings name, name brand recognition to our product. And want to know, I got to see more of him too. Because Tiago's yeah. a guy that could shoot up the rankings higher, but it's bare knuckle. Who knows? He could fall out of the rankings too. That's yeah. the cool thing about bare knuckle. It is, man. It's exciting. What else do you have, Rob? Number number three, Kimon Evans. Kimon, yeah. Dude, this guy, I'm telling you, man, that is the sleeper. That guy, watch out for that dude, man. His head movement, his reach. Head movement's um, incredible. His ability to take a punch. He's he's. He's well-rounded, man. I, I think he's a deadly guy. He's got my number three. Number two, I have to give it to Yuli Diaz, man. For, you know, again, incredible knockout, incredible power. Uh, speed is there. Um, skill set. He's, he's number two. And the only reason why he did not get number one is because my number one is someone we didn't even speak about is Dakota Cochran. Wow. What Dakota, even, or, wow, okay. Yeah, so Dakota Cochran is in a 175-pound division. Um, he's in the tournament. He beat, he beat Chris Lieben, which yep. is that's, that's, huge. That's man. gigantic. That's huge. Uh, he's he's three and zero with us. He just has a win off. I want to say it's Tyler Vogel, who had a six round war with Jake Boswick, who's in the chat. Yeah, and, Tyler Vogel's no no. Slouch. And I'm not taking anything away from Jake Boswick. No, that Jake's guy's amazing. deadly too. I, I should have. And there's a lot of fighters in so the chat now. List, speaking, of, you said that Jake Boswick's list. in the chat. Let's mm -hmm. head to the chat and see what they're saying. I see Brandon Lambert's here as well. Uh, Zion was there. How does Zion feel? Let's see. Oh, here's Yuli Monster LFG. I love it, Yuli. <laughs> He's all pumped. He's number one. I love it. And you should be pumped. Zion Thomason there. Uh, them golds getting knocked out. Them golds getting knocked out when we fight. All right, Zion. See, that's why I like Zion, though. Zion. I'm kind of glad that Zion wasn't ranked number one because, like I said, he's 21 years old. He's got a bright mm -hmm. future with us. And if you rank Zion at number one, he's just gonna have to stay there. I want to watch. I know you're a fighter. You want to be number one, but I want to watch Zion's climb. I think I I, too, it's gonna be fun to watch the Z man. But it, I love it's, it. It's it's so it's so. There's no like Anderson Silva like untouchable gods in mm -hmm. you know in BKFC. You're winning like it's you know like it's football every inch. You know, every inch matters in this game, man. Uh, just a slight, you know, slight motion to the left. Do you want to? Do you want to slip the punch? Do you want to do tough. the? Do you want to do the every inch matters? What movie is that from? Uh, oh, come on, oh, Al Pacino. No, 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 no. Al Pacino. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Um, That's it. Not the program, man. That <laughs> program was a good movie. I'll take us down a whole nother lane. Every inch yeah. does matter. I agree with you, and, and it's very true what you're <laughs> she saying. She said, and it, oh lord, <laughs> we're going off the rails here. <laughs> Show some decorum. Come on, what are you doing? God, um, Jake Boswick's in the chat as well. We love awesome. Jake. Uh, I always see Jake. I see you online. I see you on socials. Always working hard, ringing out your shirt, training with Timberland, and just just kicking ass. Jake saying he's coming for Lane. Son, coming for Ooh. Julian Lane. I would love to watch that fight. Oh yeah. yeah, man. Oh yeah. And, and Jake, uh, this is for you and anybody from England. Winner can have. What is it called? Not salad dressing, salad cream or something. He was telling me all about it. They love salad. They they love uh, it. I I would, okay. I don't know. That's what they he's love. He's training out of Florida, man. I don't know what's in the. I don't know what's in the water down there, dude. Oh man, it just produces some monsters. One after another. One after another. <laughs> I gotta man. move down there and start lifting some weights or something, man. These boys are serious. <laughs> <laughs> you can lift weights living here too. I, I know. I'm the same way. I don't know. It's just the, some great fighters out of Florida, man. A lot of them hit the list, but uh, I always enjoy going to Florida. 
Uh, so is there anything else you want to cover with the rankings before we move on? Nah, nah. I would like to, uh, I want to hear what Nate has to say about the rankings when we get him on the show. Nate Shook is coming up in moments. So we have a lot to talk about with Matchmaker, BKFC Matchmaker, the man himself, Nate Shook. He's going to be live in the studio. None of this is coming in right now. He's getting ready to come in. But Uh, first, before we get to Nate, I think he's going to join us for our knockouts of the week. That's coming up next. And then we're going to get to everything from, we're going to talk about the tournament. We're going to talk about the rumored match that we've seen, uh, on social media that a lot of people are talking about, which is, um, Yuli and Tiago. Uh, mm-hmm. If that's happening or not, because I've not heard that's official, so I don't. I know. didn't either. I thought the the tournament was ru- moving forward, was running as normal, but. And for any fighter or anybody in the chat that has questions for Nate, drop them in there, and we'll try to get to some of those too. But first, we'll get to the knockout of the week, and before we do that, let's get to this. <laughs> Fighting Championship makes its Alabama debut Friday, April 30th. Watch as knockout artists Josh the Hammer Burns and Dylan Bad Boy Kleckler knuckle up in a heavyweight title eliminator. And BKFC vet Marcel Stamps prepares for war with the undefeated Marine Mike Richmond. Plus eight more bare knuckle fights. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship 17, Friday, April 30th, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Download it now at BKFC.com. Can I'm going to pull the curtain back. We have Nate Shook on here. We're going to talk to him in a minute. My co-host Rob just left. After he spilled his tiger life, did you at least bring back something to wipe it up with? No. I did. I actually dried my hands. I'm not sure if you guys can hear me or not. I dried my hands oh, this guy. on my pants. This guy. <laughs> so you were in the bathroom, all right? You I washed did. your hands. Yes. His hands are, let me uh, touch that paper so I can see your hands are wet. There is a little moisture on him. He did wash his hands. You're free to shake hands if you want, Nate. I'm not going to. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Rob's back from the potty break. Yes, take, yeah, I had to take a quick potty break. And we're break. here Nate's... live with matchmaker Nate Shook. Hey, Nate, how you uh, doing, buddy? Thanks for good having me, guys. You. I'm excited to be here. We're glad you're in the studio here. Put yeah. that up a little closer to your mouth as you talk. There you go. And uh, we'll, we're going to talk. Man, you're all over the board today, Rob. <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, stuff with you. We had a little interview, talk about the tryouts. We're going to have uh, people asking you questions. We'll get to that in a minute. But first things first, we have to get to our now becoming world famous, I guess I'm making that up, yeah. knockouts of the week. Woo! Didn't work this week. Mm. Try again. Ah! Nate, you try it. Why is it Nate? Yeah, you do it. Point, Nate. Look at that. The man himself hey! had to do it. I have, no, I have no clout on this show. What do you want from me? <laughs> the knockouts of the week. And I want to remind you that knockouts of the week aren't just uh, combat sports related. They don't just have to be that. They can be anything. Um, I guess we'll start with my knockout yeah. of the week. Let's hear it. My knockout of the week is an interesting pick because a lot of people were into this. A lot of people gamble on this, you know, mm-hmm. friendly gambling. There's no money involved, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, March Madness. We all saw, of course, what happened. Uh, people call it an upset. I don't. It was Baylor taking on Gonzaga and Gonzaga getting the big L, which is interesting to me because if you look about it, the knockout of the week, look at, I. how do I say this? So if you look at Gonzaga, I think they were a little overrated. A lot of really? people, yeah, yeah. I think, I think that they... Okay. I don't think that people thought they were watching what was happening. For instance, they got a kind of a screwed up with the COVID thing in the tournament. They got, they got a lot of lucky breaks from what I can see. Now I'm not a basketball analyst or anything, but that's just mm-hmm. what I can see. And then I, I think that they, they thought they were better than they were. We've seen this happen in fighting too, where guys going to get knocked out sure. and then they ended up losing and, and people call it an upset. I just picked it for the knockout of the week because I feel like it's a knockout of the week with the upset. And for those that gamble, it's a knockout of the week for your wallet. So, uh, you know, that's just my knockout of the week. I don't know. Slam dunk. <laughs> uh, he's on fire. Like NBA jam, even though it's not the NBA. I don't know. Yeah, so my knockout of the... <laughs> He's like, let's move on. <laughs> my knockout of... I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, man. I love NBA Jam. I could talk about that all day and video games. <laughs> my knockout of the week actually comes uh, from a living legend, uh, martial artist. Uh, Jackie Chan's birthday was yesterday, I believe. Jackie Chan, Jackie man. Jackie Chan turned 67. Look at this guy. Jackie Chan. Yeah. I, I think, you know, when I was growing up, Jackie Chan was the man. Everyone talking. He did all his own stunts. He did all his own stunts, and you don't always see that. I know. He actually, a lot of people don't know his true backstory. He went through the Beijing Opera, which is basically like gymnastics training, but with corporal punishment. Like literally, what? yeah. So Beijing Opera, he did a lot of training there. There's no and, singing involved. Uh, no, there is. Oh. So it's very acrobatic, though, and you have to do X amount of push-ups, X amount of handstands. Very, very strict. Again, you mess up a back handspring, you're getting whipped. It's well, you got to learn, cool. right? Yeah, I guess that's one way to learn. Um, learned, uh, <laughs> it performed in the Beijing Opera, obviously a martial artist, a living legend. And my yes. knockout of the week is 
dude, you know, he, he brought, uh, between him and Bruce Lee, he oh brought martial arts to the United Chuck States. Norris. Well, to United States. Chuck Norris. Chuck. You got to throw him in there too. Yeah. But, but, uh, you're talking about the opera before we move on to the fans knockout of the week. Mm-hmm. I think Nate, I think you would like to hear this too. What would it sound like if Rob was, we're an opera singer. Go ahead, Rob. <laughs> I'd like to hear, would you like to hear that, Nate? No. Come on, Rob. Go ahead. Try it. Rob as an opera. Ah. Uh, <laughs> We're losing our we're losing our viewers. There Please goes stop. twenty twenty. <laughs> they're all dislike buttons. No, hit the like button for Rob. Hit the like button for Rob. Uh, yeah, they're, they're on the boom. Yeah, boom, please hit the like those. button so you can help me out with my opera skills. It's so good. he can make his money to go sing better, right? Absolutely. Nate's yeah, <laughs> just like, what did I get? Why am I in here? What did I get myself into? Uh, let's talk about the fans knockout of the week. We like uh, Nate. You've been watching. We like when people send stuff in. So the fans knockout this week comes from. I want to get your name right. Uh, it's up on the screen whoa, there. Whoa, whoa, John W. from Santa Clara, California. Uh, California. Well, this is a party. different knockout of the week it for is. sure. Uh, Carissa Sagala, who had that amazing fight at Knuckle Mania. And I know the guy here who matched it up, Nate Shook. Yeah, what a great against uh, Starling. Amazing I mean, fight. Was two hundred some uh, punches each thrown in that fight? Uh, it, was, it was an incredible number of, of punches thrown. A great fight for them, and really put those two females on the map. Yeah, can we flash back to that picture? Because I have a question about that picture. Um, I'm not a tattoo guy. Does anybody have mm-hmm. tattoos in this room anywhere? No? I actually do. So I know That's there's. I know like Jake Boswick was in the chat. He's a tattoo mm-hmm. guy. There's other guys. Yuli's a tattoo guy. So when you look at this tattoo on her, I'd have to imagine. I'd have to imagine uh, when you look at this tattoo on her that the derriere part had to kind of hurt, right? Isn't it when there's more flesh or is it when there's less flesh it hurts? Let us know in the comments section, but that's a lot of ink. It's very nice. It's very colorful, but not me. I couldn't do it. No way. Uh, Would you get a tattoo? Um, I've always said no. I've had a son, and now I'm kind of on the fence. What are you gonna do? Footprints on you or something? Like the, you know, <laughs> I don't know about those, that. Yeah, it's not prints. a puppy. <laughs> I don't know. That's what people do, right? I, I'm afraid of needles. I don't like them. Uh, but uh, and, and I would not get a tattoo. I'm too indecisive. Carissa, you know, uh, <laughs> aside from obviously being extremely uh, beautiful, very attractive, Brazil, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt or close to it, she is very well well rounded. Obviously, a great bare, bare knuckle fighter. Mixed martial artists, you know, great background. So aside from, you know, visually, aesthetically looking, you know, very attractive, you know, there, there's a, a lot of depth to our fighters as also, well. Also, you know, I mm-hmm. rode with her after Knuckle Mania to get on the, air, the airplane with her and we were just having a chat. What a wonderful she? person. Yeah. One, both of them. I talked to both of them. They're both. One, actually, I said this before. Starling was like, uh, it was after the fight. She goes, I didn't even think I threw enough punches. I kept thinking that. I'm like, no, you did. And Sigalo said she was getting DMs, Instagram follows from sure. everybody. So we think you're both incredible. We know you guys watched the, the, the show and, and thank you for fighting for us because it was a hell of a way to start Knuckle yeah, Mania, right? see Nate? them again. Right. So <laughs> let's, uh, yeah, I always forget the email every week. I forget the email. Thank God. Our, our wonderful producers put mm-hmm. that up there. You'd think I'm drunk or something every week. No, this is just me. You can submit your knockout of the week to the email podcast at bare TV. Isn't it funny? It's such an easy email podcast, podcast at bare knuckle TV. And I can never mm-hmm. remember what it is till they flash it on the screen. Please. It could be any knockout. It could be a famous knockout that you love one from BKFC. As you saw, it could be a news story. It could be a fighter, whatever you'd like, please submit it. Cause we like shouting you guys out. The other guy we like to shout out, of course, is my main man, Nate Shook. A lot of people loving him because you're the guy that's responsible for the, um, for the matches, for the matches we see. And that's not an easy thing to do these matches the way you, I mean, you have to have some kind of vision when you look at these matches. Yeah, when we sit down and we go to put these matches together, it's not just about the, the fighters' records. It's about what two fighters are going to make an exciting match you know, for the fans because at, at the end of the day, this is sports entertainment. Mm-hmm. And if the fans aren't entertained, they're not going to keep tuning in. But we just have a pool of, of talented fighters who love to go out there and really just you know throw bombs at each other. I, I want to stop you for a minute because I, yeah. I agree, agree with everything you're saying. But you just said it's sports entertainment. I want the people to understand when, when you say sports entertainment, that does not mean it's fake at all. You more mean sports and entertainment where sports yes. entertainment people think pro wrestling. It's not that. It has elements of that mm-hmm. uh, with the entertainment. But we're sports and entertainment. Is that hard for you when you look at a record? You're like, this record be, would be a great, you know, looking at just the records. And then you go, but I, I can't put this person in there because I don't think, like, what's your process? You go through all that, but is it hard mentally for you to kind of say, I want this guy? And do you ever have like favorites you want to see? And well, you just I'm, can't do that. I'm glad that you brought it up uh, at this mm-hmm. point because uh, we're going to be talking about the tryouts. Yeah. And the trial process is huge. Uh, when we first started putting these matches together, we'd have fighters uh, that would hit us up that maybe were 5 and 0 or 6 and 0 in mixed martial arts. Mm-hmm. But then you look at their record and uh, none of their wins may have been by knockout. They might have had all wins by submission or decision. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they'll. Uh, transition well into bare knuckle fighting. So by doing these tryouts, uh, a good example in Kansas, we had an individual who had a one in 15 professional boxing record. Wow. And that might not be a person you look at and say, yeah, we want him to be a bare knuckle fighter. 
but he came to the tryouts. He really impressed us. We called him on short notice. He took a fight, 20 pounds above his normal fighting weight, and he beat an undefeated bare knuckle fighter and an undefeated professional boxer. So it just shows the importance that the tryouts have because we get to find this new talent out there that we may not have considered because what you may not know is we're getting 60 to 80 applications a day wow. really? emailing us from all over the world saying, hey, I want to fight. I'm this or I'm that. Here's you know a link to my record. We don't have the time to sit down and go through and watch all these videos and Oh, with that same shirt. <laughs> yeah, we're always wearing the same shirt. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. The chat's probably going to go. He's crazy. like, where's Walter? Awesome. He has the same outfit, so he doesn't have to right? choose every day. I'm, I'm going to have to start that up now and just wear a shirt. <laughs> the hey, it's a good shirt if you're going to wear it. Yeah. 911 Never Forget shirt. I was very proud of that event we did, and you had some great matches on that event as well. But let's talk a little bit about the tryouts. Yeah. So when guys come to these tryouts, and I'm sure the fans want this as well, what are we looking for? We're we looking for a mix max of uh, entertainment, uh, fighting ability, like how important is the punching machine, all that stuff. Yeah. So when we do these tryouts, the first we do is we get the fighters to do all their photos we have the, the professional photos for everything then we go through and we put them through um it gets joked upon but uh, an 11 minute shadow boxing and we get to see what they can do see how they move gives us a lot of footage for us to go back and review from there we look at their punching ability so how they work on a heavy bag how they work on a mitts it helps us um look at their footwork and how they react uh, if someone's you know kind of throwing punches back at them without actually doing sparring Lastly, we do the punch meter. The punch meter uh, shows us their pounds per, uh, pounds of force, and that lets us know, like, for their size. We have an indiv individual coming up fighting who doesn't hit hard for his weight, but when we saw him work, uh, even though he's a heavyweight, he was going nonstop through the entire tryout process where if people looked at him, they might not realize how uh, good of his cardio could be. We saw it there firsthand, and not only that, well, he has had a ton of energy. Now, does somebody interview these guys, uh, sit down with them, find out their stories, find out, it, does that matter with the process, uh, their, their ability to entertain as well? I mean, fighting is obviously the most important, but does that weigh in on the process at all? Absolutely. So we bring out um, other BKFC staff. So we've had uh, Lytle. Chris Lieben, yeah. Lytle, Sean Wheelock came out yeah. to one, David Feldman came out, Dave Jr. came on out, and we talk to these fighters and see what their story is. There's more to this business than just being able to go out there and fight. Finding people that can go out there and fight is is pretty easy to do but having someone that the the fans can relate to have someone that can entertain them and and people can look at them and want to keep watching them that's the importance of the trout and evan comes out there gets all this footage we get it uh cropped down talking about the lord evan zentor he comes out there and gets <laughs> yeah. some great footage i love it sure he's, <laughs> he's very talented kiss his ring uh, by the way, the footage we're seeing is actually from the BK TV app. We were looking at earlier, BKFC.com. That's from the Tampa tryouts. Mm. Uh, and we had some of that on Instagram, I think, too, the other day, uh, which is interesting because we have a guy who is fighting on the upcoming bout. I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. I just remember you're wearing an Austin 316 shirt. And I Zach. Love it. <laughs> Zach, thank you. Uh, so speak on that a little bit. I mean, with the tryouts, we've signed a, or to events, I mean, a lot of guys. How many guys would you estimate we signed? And what are some of the top guys that came from tryouts? I know Chop Chop did. Yeah, I mean, pro fighter, world champion, former, you know, he came to a tryout. And, and that's, I don't want to say what irks me, but when I have people hitting me up saying, why do I have to try out? I'm a pro fighter. It's different. But then you see world class athletes like Chop Chop Coley coming out to his tryouts to show why he belongs in the squared circle. It just, it puts a stamp on the importance of these tryouts. Last event, we had six fighters that we discovered through the tryouts. Wow. This next event, we have four fighters that came through a tryout process. And moving forward, you're going to see more and more fighters. That's going to be the way we're going. Unless we go out there and we headhunt for a specific fighter and say, we absolutely want this person, the rest of these fighters are going to have to come through this tryout process. But business-wise, I feel like that's the best thing you can do because here we are. We're getting these guys, some are known kind of known in their area. Some are relatively unknown. And we're saying here, we're presenting these guys to you. Look how they can fight. This is for your approval, whether you like it or not. These are the creme de la creme that we can find from around the country. These guys drive in too. I know guys driving from all over the country. I mean, this is a big deal. So if we can continue to program them uh, on our events, we can all grow. The whole company grows. We watch these guys' careers grow. We were talking about this with the rankings earlier. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to do rankings because a lot of these guys were so young, haven't had a ton of fights. As that continues, we're going to see some of these guys from the tryouts, I'm sure, show up in the rankings too if they get the win-loss record in their favor and a couple other things. So it's a very exciting part, uh, excuse me, time to be a part of BKFC. And you have a very important job being a matchmaker and the tryouts. So, I mean, is that stressful or is that something you really enjoy? No, I mean, you know, Brian, we have a great team. We sit down here. You've been in the conference room. You see, I put my thoughts up on the wall. You do. And I'm constantly erasing and changing it. We Mad review scientist. it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's... The tryouts are very crucial, and you're going to see a change in the tryout process moving forward. We're going to start implementing um, 
the fighters that we've had that may not be active fighter or may have retired coming to the tryouts more and doing seminars it's great and teaching oh, awesome. these, what it is to be a bare knuckle fighter because this is not boxing this is not mixed martial arts Save this is time. five you know five rounds two minutes each and you see some of these boxers get uncomfortable when they get clinched you see some of these other athletes um, not used to getting hit with a bare fist. So it's having these uh, these former barnacle fighters coming out there and doing these seminars is going to be crucial. Yeah, I agree. Why, why do you think it is? I've seen in my experience talking to not everybody, but uh, former boxers that have, fight, that, excuse me, that have fought for us. I feel like they all come in and they, they say, oh, they'll be fine because they're boxers or, 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 oh, we've done bare knuckle training. But then every time they end up getting a run for their money or they end up losing because I don't think they train properly for bare knuckle. I mean, do you tell them that flat out when they come? This is a different sport. I, I tell them all the time in interviews, but I don't think they always understand that. Sometimes when you get to these high levels, it's hard to understand there's a slight change. It's, look at wrestling. Some of the best wrestlers in mixed martial arts you can name probably yeah. don't have the accolades in regular high school and collegiate wrestling. When you get when you take the gloves off and you get into the squared circle and you have someone that can hold on to you and punch you, if you're boxing at these high levels, you're used to the referee separating you. Now you don't have that. Nope. Now you have the referee just sitting there looking and sometimes second nature might kick in and be like, oh, the ref's gonna break us. And even if the, the punches aren't doing a lot of damage, they're still landing and they're still landing clean. And it could influence the judges it does. You know, in the long run. It's kind of their safety blankets taken off them with the um, clinching. So that's yeah. interesting to see. So as far as tryouts, I mean, has there been a, a certain area where you've had your, your favorite tryouts, the one you enjoyed the most, where you saw some of the most talent? I think my favorite one was Arizona. I mean, just all together, it was a great experience. Outside of Arizona, we had a, uh, two great trials in Philadelphia, two great trials in Florida. You know, we had Kansas. We just had Alabama. Alabama was by far the largest. Uh, we had uh, close to 200 people pre-register for uh -huh. that. But obviously with COVID and everything going That's on. That's crazy, yeah. Uh, we had almost 70 uh, people traveling, driving, take a bus in, flying from Do you know Canada. where the, fur the furthest was Canada? Where's the furthest away that they came in from? Do you know? For this one, it was Canada. Wow. Hey. Um, Hey, hey. Yeah, thank you for laughing my stupid joke. Yeah. Uh, but as far as Alabama, you had Chris Lytle there. I know that uh, he's he's searching around. So he's uh, or like a Lieben when they come. They're really instrumental in talking to you about who might make it as well. Is that true to say? Absolutely. I, I never stepped in there. I don't know what it's like to get you know punched in the face with a bare knuckle in the squared circle. These two guys do. Other fighters that we have that we're going to be moving around to these tryouts, they do. So I might look at something and think that, hey, this guy really has something. And they might not, or vice versa, yeah. where I'm like, uh, and they're like, no, this guy has what it takes. And I pull them aside. We discuss things. We don't make our final decision there. We come back here. We go over everything. That's why it takes a week or two. The process is going to speed up. Yeah. We're going to have results out faster. Um, out of this last tryouts, we could, you could see 20 of these guys fight in BKFC or Toe the Line fight series. We're going to announce two today for contracts. Mm. It's important because of that. Uh, because as Dave Feldman uh, mentioned, I believe last week about the new uh, punch style program coming out, it's awesome. this Pension is going thing. to uh, be a factor in these contracts, but you're going to see uh, nine of these guys right now fighting on total line fight series over the next probably four months. And then two other fighters that aren't going to get contracts today that will fight on BKFC here in the near future. And then uh, one thing we are implementing is taking two fighters from every or fighters from every tryout and having them in a tryout versus tryout fighter match on every card now. Oh, that'll be great because you yeah. know these guys when when they're especially young in the industry, which a lot of us are because this is a newer uh, fight game that we've kind of created, but you know differently than it used to be. But I feel like a lot of these guys that are coming in, they're going to fight differently in their first couple fights. You would think because they have to get used to it. Some of them are going to swing for the fences. I feel like some of those fights could be the best fights on the card. Just the, the young guys want to impress. Yeah, we looked at Diaz versus Ruggiero. There you go. They're both from the tryouts. Both yeah. from the tryouts. You know, Spencer that. was at the Kansas. Dave was out in uh, Arizona. They both came up to me. They both told me about their story. They both had a style that when we matched them up, we're like, even though they're slightly different, where Dave Diaz is very aggressive and Spencer was more counter and moving, we knew it was going to be an entertaining fight. <sighs> Wasn't we, ever. We couldn't predict how entertaining it was going to be, but we knew the fans were going to love it. They did not 
uh, let anyone down by any means, and we're excited to have both of them back here soon. You know, really quick before we announce the winners from the Alabama Trouts, it's important to me, I feel like, in the structuring of a bare knuckle fighting championship event to start off with a bang. You know, you want to start the crowd off, get them excited. I think you did a great job with that at Knuckle Mania with Sagala Starling, and I think you did a great job with Ruggieri and uh, Diaz too. Uh, speak to that when you put together these these cards. I mean, is that your vision? You got to start off with a bang because I feel like all of our shows start off is like a structure to make the show get better and better. I feel like it does every time. So we get together and we sit down and look at these matches. Yeah. And I mean, when I put the fight card up there, the first thing I do then is go to Dave Jr. and say, hey, we have to have two fights, obviously, on the prelims. We have to have seven fights, eight fights on the pay-per-view or on the app side. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have a dark fight here and there, yeah. one that's not being shown. And um, I, I get his advice and we go and we pitch it to Dave Sr. And I say, hey, here's the, the format we want to go with. Because looking from the outside, a fan's perspective might see something marketable in a fighter that will relate that that makes them want to get on the app and it's good to get you know people's uh, opinions on what fights they think are really going to draw people because at the end of the day we want people to get on the app, oh, yeah. watch more fights, watch the past, and grow with us. And the app, by the way, since Nate's indirectly plugging it, I'm going to give it to you. BKFC.com, the VKTV app. Nate does my job better than he does. See how he weave that in there? But that is true. We look forward to uh, you uh, consuming the product. So we have some questions for Nate coming up on screen. This is from our chat. Uh, let's look what we have here. The first one's going to come up. This is from Thanks Ryan Perez. When's Nate feeding Tomlinson to Grant? Ryan, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> when is that going to happen, Nate? I mean, let's, let's call it out right here. Tomlinson, what, who do you say? Tomlinson? Like Jared. Oh, Thompson. Oh, Thompson, I'm sorry, yes. my glasses are on. Travis Thompson. Travis Thompson to Grant. Man. The animal. So <laughs> that's a fight. If you look on the board, I'd, I'd love for that fight to happen. So would I. Jared Grant is young, up and coming. Travis Thompson has fought, I don't know what, 25 professional Bad boxing dude. matches. You know, five bare knuckle, tough, durable, yep. two different styles. I think that will let us know exactly where Jared Grant is in his career in bare-knuckle mm -hmm. fighting, for sure. I agree. I'm a big fan of Jared Grant as well. He's our youngest, I think, that we have. Made his pro debut in bare-knuckle, which is, uh, he's here for the long run. This guy's ready to rock. He's had an impressive record. It's impressive showings. Rob and I have talked about him. And the animal, I mean, again, tested. Time tested. So yeah. I want to get that fight on. What are you doing, Nate? Start signing that so, stuff right now. And, and people love Jared down in yeah, Florida. Jared's great. Kid yeah. Gotti, baby. <laughs> Kid Gotti. Oh, the enforcer. Let's see, Nate. What is one of your favorite matches that you made so far that looked good on paper and then looked even better in the squared circle? That's an excellent question. I should cheers yeah, the Tiger Life for that question. That's a great question. Cheers that's the Tiger Life for that question. So good. That's good. good. All right, what do we got? Oh, he's taking a sip. I didn't even take my sip. <laughs> you gotta take your sip. I spilled half mine. I'm all Tiger Lifed up. So that's a great question on the screen. What, how can you uh, answer that, Nate? Yeah, it's not like fair for me to answer this because. The, the most recent fights are the ones on your, your, your mind. mind. Mm -hmm. And the way we're moving forward, like I said, the diaz Gary fight mm -hmm. was something that, as a company, we decided we have to have these tryouts to find this new talent. And because of the tryouts, we're going to push you know people through that way and make these these tryout fights. So I have to say right now, looking back, Ruggeri diaz because it's something we envisioned, we know a lot of these people can fight. We know mm -hmm. when we put this match together, the ones that are going to be entertaining, like Tiago. His fight was lame. Mm -hmm. Very entertaining wow. fight. Like, wow. And that was a last minute come yeah. together. That was like on yeah, that's right. I forgot to talk about that. I think yeah. Julian took that on like, what, a week's notice or yeah, something? So yeah. even that, it's more impressive that he lost that close. Yeah. And, and that fight is a fight that we wanted to do at some point. Mm -hmm. And it just came together and became an amazing fight. So I don't want to take away from the other fights. But knowing the process we're going through, I'm excited to see what these tryouts can really put together for us in the future because they make themselves. I mean, they truly mm -hmm. do. It's fun when you get back and you, we start to talk about what you've seen and watch the footage. That's yeah. always a good time, too. Uh, Rob, I, I feel like I've been just talking to Nate here. I'm so interested and locked in. So we let's got one, get, we, we got, got one more question. Who's this guy? Joe, Joe Miggs. Miggs. What's up, Joe? How what's are up, you? Joe? Nate, Nate, go ahead. What fight would you uh, really like to see happen that hasn't happened yet in BKFC? That's a Rob versus loaded. Brian. <laughs> Joe, no, that already happened, and Brian won. <laughs> I, I was gonna say, um, Joe, if you could be in here for a day or two and look on the board in our conference oh, room, insane. I'm, I'm constantly. There's probably sixty fights that I'd like to see happen that I put up there. We break it down by weight class, potential dates and locations. Um, Nate, give me your top three in no specific order Ooh. right now. I'm going to put him in a hot seat. On Main Street, I'm Front Street, you're on the spot. Seat. I'm not doing it. He is, Nate. Don't look at me. Oh, I wouldn't do Number that three in no specific order. <laughs> no, the first right. three that comes to mind, what so, would you like to see? Top so of your head. We'll, we'll do one, okay. and it'll okay. lead you into the, okay. next, uh, the next topic here. Um, 
a fight that you know, everyone wants to see in South Florida is going to be uh, Yuli versus Tiago. Uh, What's going on we, with yeah, that? That's, yeah, everyone wants to see. Right. Now, we, that's we, a good we transition. We're ask that. I'm going to stop him right now. You did yeah. lead into my next question. Is that an official fight? Because we've been yeah, seeing we on Instagram. Uh, we see everyone Facebook, talking about it. Marcel media. Stamps was upset about it. Now he yep. says he's not. What is the deal with that? Is Yuli versus Tiago happening? Because I thought we were doing is a tournament, books? right? And now, <laughs> I said to keep you guys. Uh, Why would you do that? On, on he he so, slow rolled us. He slow rolled us. So Yuli versus Tiago fight is not official. It's not no. official, folks. Here's Hard the thing. Hear from <laughs> not yet. Not yet. I think I down think. down in South Florida. That's a fight that would be a huge draw. Mm -hmm. It's a fight that we've had a lot of people interested in um, and have us put together. Everyone knows that our plan is to do the 175 pound tournament. Mm -hmm. um, heavyweights, we did an eight man tournament for the championship. 135ers, we did a tournament for the championship. 155, we did a tournament for So that's for the what we're doing, the tournaments. Typically speaking, that's, uh -oh. what, that's how we do it. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there, there's no but to this. It's after COVID happened, we transitioned from the eight man or eight person tournament format mm -hmm. down to a four person. Mm -hmm. because we had a little break in action where we went March, April, May, and what, June without events. So we went to a four-person tournament. Our goals get back to the eight-person tournament. Okay. We have a lot of dates coming up. We have a lot of talented fighters in the 175-pound division. Sure like you guys went over and we left names out. I'm glad you mentioned like Dakota Cochran and, and David Rickles because, Caveman, man. you know, it's people don't realize Marcel stamps. Mm -hmm. It's not that he hasn't fought in 175 because he didn't want to. Like it's hard. It's hard to match someone That's at one saying, Yeah. So in a tournament, people have to fight the next person in front of them. Um, Yuli versus Tiago Alves would be a phenomenal fight for us to make in Florida in front of all their fans. And if and, it's for a title or not. And Yuli actually, I remember I was interviewing him after his uh, record knockout. He respectfully called out Tiago Alves. So that's a fight Yuli wants too. You can tell that. Yeah. I, Yuli wants to fight the toughest. His, First fight, he came on in not knowing what Bare Knuckle was really about, I don't think. His next fight, he fought a much larger individual. He knocked out in sub three seconds. That's insane. Yui's not looking for an easy fight. No. And Tiago Alves is a legend in mixed martial arts. He doesn't have to do Bare Knuckle. No. He wants mm -hmm. to challenge and himself. he's training for Bare Knuckle specifically at ATT, and I've seen him. I mean, the guy is intense. He's yeah. a great guy in, in life, but when you fight him, I won't want to be across the square circle from him. He is very successful. Yep. He's at the largest gym in the world and he doesn't need to fight. No, he, he is a fighter that wants to challenge himself and I don't see him turning down a fight. And if that's the fight that comes to happen in South Florida, I think it makes sense for not only the fighters, but for the company, if it's for a title or if it's not. And yep. you know, Okay. So, I mean, ATT gym, I, I know they would really want a belt. They put it in the front. They would display it. That would be cool. And I know that that'll, that'll kind of feel Tiago's fire a little more against Yuli if this fight was to happen. So uh, you're still not sure yet. There's no ink that's dry or anything. There's no I, contracts I, out. I didn't even send the contracts out yet on that fight. Oh, you know, so, that so there might be a fight. You just didn't send the contracts I'm out. I'm going to keep the rumor mill running, man. It looks <laughs> like Alves has a has a target on his back because Hector Lombard oh, called him about back. It. Yeah. Uh, Palomino, Palomino is going to go out. up and wait, he said, for a yeah. super fight. For the fans, he was saying yep, Palomino. So. Palomino said he just wants his head. He doesn't care about belts. He's a samurai warrior and he wants his head. And Palomino's, oh. uh, he's going out there. He's saying nobody wants to fight him. And then you see Tyler oh Goodjohn hopping in saying, I'll take the fight. And Palomino's going back. You see this banter going back and forth. And then, you know, issues with visas and, or not issues with visas. A lot of rumors are, are, are going out there. And, man, those are some exciting names. Do you, pay attention of them up. Do you pay attention to that on social media? All that when people are, I mean, you have to look at what the fans want, yeah. what the fighters want. So you actually, does that, uh, when you match make, you look into that as well? Um, not so much. I mean, I look. do. <laughs> well, I here, here's, here's the reason why I don't see Palomino saying no to anybody. Mm. So if we say, Hey, do you want to fight this guy? If he's willing to go to 175 he's, he's crazy. to fight Tiago yeah. Alves, good crazy. Then I don't see him saying no to anyone at 165, let alone 155. No, he just wants to fight. The issue we had at, at 155 is we have a ton of talent, but just like anything else, this sport is still so new. Yeah. So you don't have a lot of fighters with a ton of experience. We have a lot of fighters crossing on over. You're going to see a number one contender fight happen uh, probably in May for the 155 pound to, to challenge Palomino, but he can't sit there and wait. So if he wants to step up a weight class or two to fight a, a tough opponent, 
you know, we're all for that. It's just about making the fight that makes the most sense. That makes sense that you're saying that. Of course, uh, BKFC 17 coming up April 30th. BKTV, excuse me, BKFC.com on the BKTV app. You can check it out. It's the first round of the 175-pound middleweight tournament. Marcel Stamps taking on uh, the Marine Mike Richmond. Yeah. So we're excited for that, too. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to do a big announcement now. I mean, you ready for your big announcement? Sure. Do you know what your big announcement is yet? <laughs> Did anyone tell you? <laughs> I'm sure you're going you're gonna to roll me into it. So what is it? What do so we got here? We, from, the, from the Alabama tryouts, uh, of course, we know that you've, what, is there two guys? Yeah. So we had 68 people show up for these tryouts. Okay. I could honestly feel that 40 to 50 of them could step into toe the line or the squared circle and perform and entertain the fans. But we can't sign no. 40 or 50 people to contracts. We have a new plan coming out. Um, like David Sr. mentioned with the pensions. And Incredible. this is, is going to help fighters long-term and tryouts is where everything starts. So we're going to announce two fighters. We have nine other fighters that I'm going to be reaching out to about fighting on toe the line coming up. And we're, we're going to have drum two roll. other fighters. Yeah, I hear the drum roll. It's going. the longest drum roll ever. Just All keep right, it Nate, going. Who are the two names? <laughs> two fighters who are the announcing. two lucky it's still fighters? Going. So the, the first one is going to be uh, uh, David Simpson. David Simpson. David Simpson. So David Simpson is a 175, 185-pound fighter. He, he came in. He has the look. He has the ability. And he has punching power. This man was hitting harder than the heavyweights. Really? Is he is he going to be in the tournament, too? <laughs> is he going to be locked in? Or, or is he just a last-minute addition? No. Is, so okay. his uh, first fight, I'm going to speak to uh, him and his management about. It'll be at 185. Okay. And I'm targeting August. We have uh, another 185-pounder out there that I think would uh, match really well with him. They're just going sound effect crazy in the truck. No, I don't know what they're doing. But the bottom line is, the bottom line is, uh, David Simpson is one of the fighters that yeah. came from Alabama Trout that we're going to look for more out of 175, 185. Mm. Do you have any background of him off the top of your head as far as where he's from, where he come from, or anything like that? Uh, he, he's more of a jiu-jitsu guy. Mm -hmm. He had a phenomenal amateur career. His pro career, he, um, he had two losses, and this is one of those stories where his mixed martial arts professional career doesn't showcase him and his his true abilities. So, um, like I said, he he's um, probably pushing about 200 pounds right now. So when he told me he could make 170, 175, I was, I was floored because he's in phenomenal shape. Is that what stuck out as phenomenal shape? Like why is he one of the guys you picked? Ah, uh, punch power. He was hitting heavier, uh, harder than the heavyweights. Wow. Um, uh, his, his athleticism, he was moving very well. And throughout the whole trout process, I'm not saying some people quit, but he never slowed down. Every time we had to move to a different station, he constantly, uh, gave us his all and he just, he pushed and he just, he stood out. Hustle, man. What part of the country yeah, is he from? Do you know that? Hustle. Where he came from? Uh, from I, I, I got to double check. I'd, lo I'd love to see that too as well. Well, that's congratulations, David Simpson. David I mean, Simpson, I, I can't awesome. wait to see him fight now. Welcome if, to the if, family. Yeah, if, straight up. If Nate says he's good, I believe he's good. Yeah. Welcome to the family. Uh, so I think we have a drum roll. I don't know for number two. For number if two. Not, do it. Wait for your drum roll, dude. All right, drum Come roll. On. Here it comes. Sip quick. <laughs> he's going to wet his whistle. <laughs> In right. the 135 pound division, we're going to go Ooh. with Ronnie Leone. Ronnie Leone. So. Ronnie is someone I've been talking to uh, on and off for months about getting him on a card. He's always been willing to step up and take a fight. You're leaking all over the place there, buddy. I don't know what's going on here. Um, so he, he's always been willing to step on up. He has over 10,000 followers on Instagram. He's from the Northeast. He's a two-time Bellator really? veteran. Um, it, it's just, I don't want to laugh at me right now. And you got him from tryouts. And that, that yeah. as so I spoke to earlier, and that's why it's so important. These people with these decorated backgrounds, you come try out, you, you have your shot. That's awesome. Yeah, and uh, again, he was one of the guys. Sorry, my phone's going crazy here. Um, he was one of the guys that we were trying to get on the card. It never came you know, to happen. Mm -hmm. And then I told him about the tryouts. I said, hey, moving forward, you really want to show your stuff, come to these tryouts. He you know, hopped on a plane, flown down to Alabama. Wow. And right uh, he, he's very impressive. Now, again, we have 11 other people we're going to get contracts out to for multi-fight deals, but as far as... The two contracts and how we're going, these were the two people we felt were uh, most deserving. 135, 175, slash 185. 185, yeah, so you, you're putting those divisions on notice, uh, and, and we'll see where these guys go. It's always, like I said, fun to follow the stories. By the way, our latest tryouts from Tampa, no, I'm sorry, not the latest, Alabama. latest is Alabama. Alabama. Tryouts from Tampa are on the app at mm -hmm. bkfc.com. If you want to see what we do, what goes into it, uh, everyone loves the punch meter, all oh, that yeah. stuff. Nate runs it. So either people really love it or really hate it because <laughs> I, I got six it. messages or six phone calls going right now. So 
getting uh, blown up, man. He's a yeah. celebrity now. Nate's going to get crushed or He's loved. got more likes than we, we are. Love you, Let's Nate. get some likes up on yeah, that. Yeah, hit the likes on the button. Uh, Nate, <laughs> anything else you want to talk about is important when it comes to tryouts or anything else with BKFC you'd like to touch on? Yeah, just moving forward, um, coming out to tryouts. You know, unless we are directly contacting you or your management, uh, your best bet to get on these events is come out to these it tryouts. Works. It doesn't matter if it's for Toe the Line. It doesn't matter if it's for BKFC. It helps us if we get to see them, interview them, learn more about them. And um, it's going to be the, the way we're going. And mixing these seminars in, you're going to get to meet legends of, of, and bare knuckle. Can always learn something. And learn, yeah. Mm -hmm. And take that back to your gym and really fine-tune your skills. So you're a, it's a win-win. Even if you don't get picked the first time, you can keep coming. They can repeatedly come until they, if they want to keep trying out, right? Yeah, it's, I'm glad you brought that up really quickly. Uh, we had three people at this last tryout that have been at other tryouts. And I've already been messaged by several of the people from Alabama that are going to be going to the Belfast trials on May 29th. It's got to show you something. Is that the next one? May 29th? May 29th. There it is. Belfast, New, Belfast, York. New, New York. York. Up there by the, the Bare Knuckle uh, Hall Act, of Fame. Act, the Bare Knuckle yeah. Hall of Fame, yeah. Yeah, who's going to the Bare Knuckle Hall of Fame this year? I know from our, our side, uh, Evan the Lord Zentar is getting inducted. I yeah. think Dave Jr. is getting inducted as yeah. well. So congratulations to them. Absolutely. It's going to be a, an awesome event, and we're looking forward to that. Nate Shook, we appreciate the matchmaker, the big star of the day himself, uh, coming on with us, making the time. We know you're a very busy man. I know you guys love when I say that. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to head out, though. I, I want to invite everybody, everybody, to enjoy your weekend. Enjoy WrestleMania weekend if you like WrestleMania. And uh, by the way, you made a good mean gene in the thumbnail picture. <laughs> I did. That's uh, great, a good man. macho. That was really Rob as Macho Man, too. Say, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. There you go. You got two minutes. Dig it. All right. <laughs> Put them up. Tiger Life Toast. We love you guys. Thanks for all the support. Thank you. Until next week, come on, Nate, do it. Knuckle up.